and welcome back to the summer edition of A Boat Could Wander. Well, the good news is, in that week that I've been away, I think Rob's been up on deck and he's put that final coat of primer down. You might remember previously, we did a heap of sanding, uh, we flattened out all of the primer, we did some spot filling with epoxy, and then I was ready for that final coat, which I think is done now. So, very, very close to having that finished. Anyway, let's get right up on deck and get straight back into the work that I was doing last time. Ah, oh, this is looking great. Yeah, Rob's been up here and put that last coat down. And I think he's probably thinned it out a little bit. We were discussing about whether to use some thinners or not uh, for this last coat. I think he has. It's a really nice texture. It's not nowhere near as coarse as the, the previous um, coats. Now, there was a comment um, which I appreciate very much about perhaps thinning out the uh, primer to save it, sort of having to sand back so much. Um, yeah, and I agree with that, that's a good idea. Now the reason why I um, didn't thin down the primer to start with is I wanted to make it as thick as possible because I was hoping that it was going to fill up that weave of that top layer of laminate I put down on this deck. That was a 1200 GSM, so it was really coarse, and as we can see here, it's, um, it, it left quite a deep pattern to be filled. Now the advice I got from the uh, rep for Jaton was pretty sure that the, um, the thick mega primer would just fill up all that weave. Um, and so that was the idea, or that was my expectation. So we went ahead, we used the thick primer, um, we put down four coats, and in the end it was apparent that it just wasn't gonna fill up some of that weave. So in the end we knocked it back and we uh, spot filled it with epoxy filler and then put this last coat down. Now, if you're going to do this, uh, my advice would be, particularly if you're gonna use a really heavy mat like a 1200, um, to basically put your mat down, then skim it with epoxy, and then put your primer down. Don't use the primer to try and fill up the bits and pieces because it's just not going to get there. Anyway, lessons learnt. Here we are. It's all good. Got a really nice, even, consistent texture here um, on the coach roof, on the sides, on the deck, tow rail. It's all even now, so one more knockback and then it'll be ready for painting. <coughs> right, my project for today <laughs> is to come back and work on this piece here that I put some laminate over a couple of weeks ago. So off with the peel ply. <clears throat> Lovely, you need to sand this back a little bit. It's a bit of a ridge there. <clears throat> uh, it's quite good though. It's relatively flat and straight. This ridge here is kind of intact. It's got this nice curve to it. Thanks for pointing out the mask. I've been a bit slack with this, um, so I appreciate your comments about always using a mask. Okay, it's time to do a little bit of a skim here. Now I hope this is going to work. I ran out of 407, so let's see how it goes. Looks thick enough, hopefully, to stick. Okay, I've got a little job here to work on whilst I'm waiting for that skim to set. Uh, this is just one of those cockpit sort of recess boxes, and uh, strangely enough, it's got all these big holes on the top of it, um, and I don't really understand what they're for, but I kind of don't really like them being there because if the boat takes a knockdown then that's just going to be letting a lot of water into the boat so yeah it just doesn't seem to be good to me so anyway I'm just going to um, grind these out so that I can put some laminate over these and, and close it up. <laughs> Well, that was easy. Nobody gets to see this because it's sort of up inside the top of the cockpit, so I just need to worry about the other side. Okay, well for this layup of these little holes here, um, I'm going to actually go back to using vinyl ester I think I'm going to use because epoxy is quite expensive and um, you don't even get a free hit for it, you know, whereas this uh, vinyl ester, you get a really nice high off all that styrene. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, it's just cheap and easy, and I'm going to use chop strand mat for a change. And this time, I think I'm actually going to go the other way, where you put the big circles in first, and then go back to the small circles 
last just to try uh, something completely different and to mix it up. Okay so first up I'm just going to hot glue on this uh, board with masked tape on it on the inside so that I've got something to laminate against. It's going to go there, hot glue ready, tap there, tap there, tap there, tap there, tap there. Hold it down for a couple of minutes. Okay, and that gives me a really good um, solid backing so that I've got something to laminate into. And hopefully it won't stick, fingers crossed. Right, let's do this before it uh, sets on me. Okay, now the smaller size discs. So I'm doing this the reverse way this time. Okay, last one. Okay, that looks fine. I'll just give it a little bit of a run over with this, but obviously there's not a lot of air bubbles going on. And that should be it. Job done. Right, well the next job is to work on this uh, cockpit floor, which is the part that's basically covers the engine hatch. And this is uh, normally screwed down and sealed in there, but obviously I've taken it out because I lifted the engine. Um, so I will do the same thing for this. So I'll sand it down, prime it, and um, get it spray painted. It's a couple of things that I need to do to this first though. Need to take this old pipe off that wouldn't come out before. There's some uh, drain bronze settings here that need to come out. Uh, some of these holes are a little bit uh, damaged. There's a big piece that's chipped away here, so I need to fill this up with some sort of uh, epoxy filler and uh, just give it a general sanding. <laughs> I'm just going to try out this attachment, which I've not used for a while. You know what, even with this, it's actually taking off the laminate because I can smell that, um, that smell of, uh, you know, old laminate being grind away. So this is just too aggressive. Try a wire brush. Sometimes there's no substitute for a good old fashioned hand tool. So it looks like it's gonna be 30 minutes or so with a wire brush to get all this old silicon residue out. Right, so I've got my trusty plastic right angle strip here with some tape on it, uh, hot glue gun. And I'm just going to stick this on here so that I've got a nice square edge so I can uh, really fill up these, these cavities with some hardened epoxy or some thickened epoxy. Right, I've got my trusty thickened epoxy, colloidal silica here, nice and thick. And uh, try and work it into this one. That looks good. Okay, well there's uh, lots of little bits and pieces that I've been working on. I've done all these um, deray boxes and things. So they've taken quite a long time to hand sand. I've got this recess box here and I've laminated over the four holes. Uh, let's get a closer look at that. Okay, so here's the back of the box that I laminated just with some chop strand mat. And then I've taken the backing piece off here and you can see that the, uh, the laminate's kind of almost pushed through. So it's just gonna take a little bit of skim there. So that's pretty nice. Uh, there's this cockpit sole that had a couple of things wrong with it. Let's take this off. There we go. Popped out beautifully. And clean that up. But that hole uh, has been filled in. There's some bigger pieces missing over on this side. Oh yeah, so that side there's filled up nicely. It's nice and square. I can just sand that back. And that one there. 
Okay, so I just need to um, do a little bit more prep on these and I can get some primer on them. Now the good thing about this box is I can actually screw it into the side of my workbench and I've got it nicely gripped so I can skim it this way. Nice flat edge here and just a spreader to get it into position. Work it down into those indentations. And that is it folks. Best to leave it alone, don't keep fiddling with it. This piece down here is a diesel powered compressor and it's here because Rob suggested that we try spray painting the primer onto these small bits and pieces uh, and it's going on really nicely. This would be an absolute nightmare to do by brush because you would end up with all these brush strokes everywhere that would take a lot of effort to sand back. But this is going on just beautifully and it should, uh, it should be knocked back in no time at all. Well, I'm back in the hole in the uh, cockpit um, cut out where the engine goes down uh, and I've got another problem here that I need to deal with uh, which I probably should do now yet one more job let me show you what's going on so basically you can see along here hopefully there's this sort of split or delamination and I guess what's happened here is water's got down through these holes and then it's created a little bit of a delamination um, in the laminate bit of a split so I think I'm going to sort of wedge this open a little bit and drill some holes in here put some epoxy and then clamp it down and I'm also going to drill out all of these screw holes um, countersink them and fill them in because as I said before all the current holes in the cockpit floor are pretty knackered and so I want to reposition them That's well and truly rotten. Okay, first up, we'll just try and open up this crack a little bit. Okay, now I should be able to squeeze a little bit of this epoxy into that split, hopefully. Okay, next step, thickened epoxy, 406 colloidal silica, as you could expect, fire in the hole. Beautiful. You can see it sort of really squeezing out through those cracks, so it's, it's um, getting in there nice and deep, which is what you want. Okay, so I'll take this out 
and I don't know that I really need to clamp it up that tight. Ultimately I don't want to squeeze out all that lovely epoxy I've just put in. So I'll just do it a little bit. And one there. I'm pleased with that. Okay, now these holes need to work fast because it's a warm day. I'm not going to go crazy about this. Okay, job done. Right, back down into the hole and let's undo these. Lovely, no sticking. That's what I like to see. Okay, so there it is. It's not pretty, um, but it's well and truly held together and secured with uh, thickened epoxy in these holes and then just the raw epoxy in this crack. Yeah, that's it. Next. Yeah, well I've just about finished up all of these little bits and pieces, these uh, derayed boxes and uh, these uh, boxes that go into the cockpit side. Um, so there's probably about seven little pieces and uh, getting them sprayed with the primer was such a good idea because it was just so much easier to sand back. Um, I used two different sanding grits. So I used a 320 uh, roll. And then I just bought this which was 400 and each piece has got a little bit of foam on the back and it comes in a big roll when you just rip it off. Um, but I'll also be able to use this on the long board when I do the top sides. Um, so that's made it really easy. I've not had to rub through in places. If I'd used a brush, it would have been really thick. So yeah, that's great. I'm getting there, you know, it's just about, uh, just about done with this part of the project. So I'm going to leave the update here. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. I know it's getting a little bit dull, but hopefully next week I'll get on to doing the top sides. And depending on how I go with that, I might even get onto the next exciting new project, which is ripping the fuel tank out of the bilge um, and also repairing the hole in my boat. Did I tell you there's a hole in my boat? Ah, well, I'll show you more about that next time. I'll go out with this last piece of footage. I'm just about to get up on deck and get the orbital sander out finally to just knock back that last bit of primer. I've spent the last four days um, doing all of the radiuses and corners and bits that you can't get the sander onto by hand, just with 320 and 400 paper, and it's been so boring. Um, but the next part, getting the orbital sander out, is just gonna rip through probably in about five or six hours. So I've sort of been promising myself this little bit of joy after days and days and days of hand sanding. Okay, well, thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.